Got another question for the Synoptic Questions playlist, and as always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you wanted to try it first. Okay, so we'll make a start. So probably the best thing to do is to name the technique first. So when you've got the condenser in the vertical position, it's reflux. Okay, so we'll go through the labels now. Well, I've already mentioned this piece of apparatus. So this is a condenser. At the bottom here, we've got a flask. It's actually a pear-shaped flask. And the other thing I've got to mention is the direction of the water flowing around the outside of the condenser. So it goes in at the bottom and it comes out at the top. Next thing we've got to do is draw a label diagram for the filtration apparatus for reduced pressure or vacuum filtration. So we're going to be drawing Buckner apparatus. So the first thing we need to draw is a Buckner flask. So it looks like a conical flask, but it's got this side arm and you need to say that that's going to go to a water pump. Or if you're very lucky in your school or college, it would go to a vacuum line. So the other thing you need to draw is the Buckner funnel. So it looks something like this and just make sure that the top of your Buckner flask is completely sealed. So this obviously needs to be airtight here. So moving on to part B now about amines, so we've got to talk about the reasons for these boiling points for these three amines, the structural isomers. So we can't bring in the change in number of electrons because we've got the same number of atoms, therefore the same number of electrons. You'll notice that for these two amines, they are reasonably close together. Obviously this one's higher, this one's a little bit lower, whereas this one here significantly lower. So there's actually two factors at play here. The first one is to do with branching. So we need to say something like this. The straight chain amine, so this one here, has the highest level of surface contact. So it's going to have the strongest induced dipole or London forces between its molecules. As the branching increases, so for this one and then this one, you can see that the boiling points decrease. So obviously the amount of surface contact decreases and the induced dipole forces or London forces are getting weaker. We need to pick up on the fact that this amine here, this is a tertiary amine, secondary, this is primary. This tertiary amine here has a significantly lower boiling point than the other two. So this extra factor or the extra factor of play is hydrogen bonding. These two amines can hydrogen bond to themselves whereas this one can't form hydrogen bonds. And that's because the nitrogen has got no hydrogen on it. So something like this for the effect of hydrogen bonding. So the tertiary amine has a significantly lower boiling point than the other two due to it not being able to form hydrogen bonds. And then just some final statement like this, hydrogen bonds are stronger than London forces or induced dipole forces and therefore need more energy to break. So moving on to the next part, we've got an ideal gas calculation to work out and then tie in the molecular formula with this information about the carbon-13 NMR, only showing three peaks for this amine. So we've got to rearrange the ideal gas equation for moles. So we'll quick run through the numbers. We've got the pressure in pascals, so that's absolutely fine to go straight in. The volume is in centimetres cubed, so we divide that by a million, or multiply by 10 to the minus 6, and that puts it in a metres cubed, divided by the gas constant, multiplied by the temperature, but again, that's in the wrong units, it's in degrees C, we need it in Kelvin, so we just add 273 onto 100, and we get 373. So the moles come out at 2.32 times 10 to the minus 3, obviously I'm keeping the full number in my calculator, so I'm now going to divide the mass by the moles, which gives an MR for the amine at 87. So we know it's an amine, so we've got to take 14 off for the nitrogen, so we're left with 73. So how many carbons can we have? Well, it's going to be 5. So that means we need to take 60, 5 12s for those 5 carbons. We'll take 60 away from the 73, we're left with 13, so this must have 13 hydrogens. So the molecular formula is C5H13N. Now there's a few possible structures, I think there's five possible structures for A. I'll go through each one and just quickly explain the carbon-13 NMR. 
So there's one possible structure. As you can see, we've got three equivalent carbons for these methyl groups. Another one here, and then this one here. And there's this one here. So you can see again, one, two, three carbon environments. Next one's this one. So again, you can see one, two, three environments there. We've got this one here, and finally this one here. So moving on to part C, see I've drawn up a displayed formula for the amino acid, so we can see hopefully nice and clear what's going to happen. Hydrogen on the amino group is going to combine with the hydroxyl group of the carboxylic acid group and generate a water molecule, which leads to a bond forming between the nitrogen and the carbon of this C double bond O. So we're actually forming an amide group here, and you can see it's cyclic. So there's the equation there.